With the release of Unity 6, the package multiplayer play mode is going out of experimental. If you didn't know, this package is a game changer for multiplayer development because it allows you to launch up to four editor instances alongside each other just as you enter play mode. In addition to this, and this is maybe less known, you can actually launch builds of the game. And this means that you can potentially launch a build of a simulator, allowing you to simulate the whole network topology at the press of a button. As of version 1.2, coherence is fully compatible with multiplayer play mode. So in this video, let's see how to create a scenario where we run a client alongside a simulator. As a first step, after we have prepared the project and we have installed coherence, we just want to install the multiplayer play mode package. We go to the package manager, switch to the Unity registry and search for the package itself. Click install and once the package has finished installing, we're ready to go. You will notice straight away that after the installation is complete, next to the play button, there's a new dropdown that has appeared. However, the dropdown right now only contains an option called default, which if you have it selected and you press play, you're just basically gonna play the game as you usually would. But we have this option here, configure play mode scenarios, that allows us to add more scenarios. But let's not just do that right away. We need to do one more thing first. Before we configure a play mode scenario, we want to create a build profile. This is also a new addition in Unity. We go to file, build profiles, here, as you can see, we have the ability to select multiple platforms, but the one we want is basically a headless server of the platform that we're currently on. In my case, it's a macOS server. So I create a new build profile and I rename it. And we need to ensure that this particular build profile has the coherence underscore simulator symbol in the scripting defined list. This is gonna ensure that whenever the simulator is launched, the code that is uh, gated behind this uh, scripting define will be executed only on the simulator. It's a usual pattern when we work with coherent simulators. When the build profile is ready, we can now go to the configure play mode scenarios option at the top and create a new one. We want to ensure that the editor option at the top is checked. That's basically the one we're gonna use for ourselves, for the client. But then we don't wanna use additional editor instances, but rather we want to create a new local instance. This is gonna be the simulator we can assign the previously created build profile to it so that this particular local instance will be run, will be built as a macOS server. And then the critical part is the arguments. The build needs to be launched with particular arguments to act as a simulator. These arguments are listed on our documentation, but I'm gonna show you a quick trick to get the arguments straight away from the Unity editor so you don't have to even open the website or remember what they are. The trick is to use the coherence hub and particularly the simulators tab to get all of the arguments and their correct values. But first we need to get the values inside the tab itself. And to do so, we are gonna play the game once. First thing of course, we wanna ensure the replication server is running. So we run one and in this particular instance, I'm using worlds. At this point, we can just press the play button. And once the game has started, in the UI provided by Coherence, we just connect to the replication server. The game doesn't need to work at this point, in fact mine doesn't. You just literally need to connect to the replication server successfully. Back in the Coherence hub, we can now click the fetch button and the replication server endpoint parameters will be all populated. Now, next to the run local simulator button, there's a little button in the bottom right corner that allows us to copy the console command that we would need to use if we were to run a simulator in the console ourselves. That's the command that contains all of the parameters, but the button is disabled because there's no build selected right now. To create a build, what we can do is we can just use the multiplayer play mode scenario that we prepared before and press play and Unity will create a build of the simulator for us very quickly. And then we can use that build to point to it in the coherence hub to then finally enable that button. By opening any kind of text editor and pasting the command in, you will be then able to copy all of the arguments and going back to Unity, paste them inside the multiplayer play mode preset. And that's pretty much it. Now we can just select the play mode scenario that we created and press the play button. Unity builds the simulator and launches it for us with all the correct arguments. And then it just starts the editor as one of the clients. You can see from the console that the simulator has connected successfully to the replication server. And now we can connect our client as well.
and the game starts and everything is working just as expected. By going to the coherence bridge, we can also verify that the client connections are there for the simulator and for the client that we're just representing with the editor. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you will have fun using Unity's multiplayer play mode to work with simulators faster than ever before. And if you want to know more about simulators, just click on the links in the description, which will bring you to our documentation, or watch one of the videos that will show up at the end of this video. See you next time!